To understand how applications work, we need to understand their architecture. The following is a very short overview of the architecture of web and mobile applications. First, we'll look at traditional web architecture. Web applications have a part that runs on the internet browser, the client, and a part that runs on the web server, the server. As we said before, the part that runs on the browser is called the front end, and the part that runs on the server is called the back end of the application. When a web address, or URL, is entered in the browser, the browser then makes a request to the server using HTTP protocol in order to access the resource corresponding to that URL. The web server is responsible for locating the address of the requested resource, which can be a single web page or the home page of a web application. It then accesses the database if its information is required and builds a response in HTML code, which is the language used to format the content of the web page. This response is sent to the client browser that requested the resource. The browser interprets the HTML code and draws the screen, showing images, buttons, menus, controls, and all the information of the requested page, with the appearance and functionality programmed in the requested page or in the web application. By default, the browser shows the HTML elements with a native style, that is, the buttons, text, boxes, and other objects are seen according to the operating system and the browser being used. To customize the look and feel of these elements, the HTML allows including CSS, Cascade Style Sheets, code. CSS, currently in its CSS3 version, is a graphic design language used to define the style of HTML documents. These include font color and type, background color, margins, and so on. CSS has evolved in such a way that it allows including animations and other advanced effects in web pages. For the web page displayed by the browser to not be static and to achieve interactive behavior and a good user experience, the HTML code can also include JavaScript code. JavaScript is a programming language that enables web pages to request data, respond to user events, display content updates on the fly, interact with maps, make 2D or 3D graphic animations, and play multimedia files, among many other things. Recently, to enhance the JavaScript language by adding modularization, static data types, and classes, many web applications use the TypeScript language, which is an open source programming language created by Microsoft. TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript which means it has more features, but is based on JavaScript and converts your final code into common JavaScript. This way, if the browser can execute JavaScript code, it won't notice that the original code was made with TypeScript and will run JavaScript language. Currently, the new version of the Angular 2 framework is being developed in TypeScript. This architecture is quite popular and is the most used for web pages. However, web applications have turned to new technologies that provide greater interactivity and a better user experience. When the web application is required to show a lot of content on the screen, be highly interactive, and have a much faster response time than a traditional web application, a different architecture is used. These are called single-page applications. In this case, the application is sent to the browser and the page is not reloaded while in use, which provides a user experience similar to a desktop application. This implies that almost all the functionality is handled in the client, including the generation of HTML code, since the web application runs on a single page and the resources are dynamically loaded from the web server in response to user actions. To this end, the code on the server includes services, in other words, programs that respond to requests made by the client, like retrieving data from the database, but the application logic is on the client. 
When the browser requests a URL from the server, it responds with the page in formatted and decorated HTML code, as we saw in the case of a traditional web application. But then the client uses AJAX to request the data from the server by invoking the corresponding API, which obtains the data from the database and returns the information in JSON format to the client. This prevents the page from reloading, thus achieving better performance and enhancing the user experience. To implement this type of solution and have the browser keep in a single page an application that requires communication with the server, JavaScript frameworks are used. These include Angular, React, or Vue.js, among others. Although it can also be programmed using JavaScript directly, integrated with languages such as .NET, Java, or Python. The above frameworks are very efficient in manipulating the DOM, document object model. This is a model that allows storing the web page's HTML as nodes and structured objects with their properties and methods. All modern browsers use this technology and allow for information to be quickly interpreted by the browser and displayed on the screen. These frameworks also allow the use of web components, which are a W3C standard and are supported by the main generators for the encapsulation of HTML, JavaScript, and CSS in components for a page created by us. This facilitates the reuse of controls among developers. Although SPAs offer many performance advantages, they have some downsides in large systems because a very heavy client can delay the initial load. Also, security will be more difficult to monitor as the code is mostly in the client. So far, we've focused on web applications. Now let's look at the architecture of a mobile application. In particular, we'll consider mobile applications that are always connected via Wi-Fi, online applications, which is the most common scenario, although high performance or high availability mobile applications are usually designed offline. As seen before, a mobile application also has a part that runs on the client, in this case, the mobile device and also a part that runs on the server, which provides information to the client. Each mobile platform has its own language, Java for Android and Swift for iOS. When compiled, the application is installed on the device. This file will contain all the business logic and also the application metadata that includes everything needed to implement the user interface and also other resources, such as the URLs of each required API. When the application is executed, it accesses the web server to run the programs, the services, that will return the necessary data, which will be processed by the application and displayed to the user on the device. One advantage is that the application will never directly access the database. This will always be done through the service layer and this layer will be independent of the device being used. That is to say, if we compile an application for Android and for iOS, both applications can use the same service layer. While native applications provide strong performance and access to device hardware and software resources, their disadvantage is that you have to learn how to program for those platforms. Progressive web applications can be a good option before developing natively, depending on the case. To sum up what we've seen, while traditional web architecture is still widely used for web pages, this is not the case for web applications, where it's considered obsolete. While single page applications have been a market trend, they can be problematic if the system grows, because the customer becomes too heavy, and also due to security considerations. The architecture of high-performance applications uses REST services in the server, as do mobile applications, and in both cases, the data is updated in response to client events.
Mobile applications have many advantages over web applications, such as access to device resources. But PWA applications are increasingly closing the gap and are not as complex to program as native applications. With Genexus, using all these platforms is not a problem because it's capable of generating web applications with an excellent user experience, whether they're single page applications or not. And also, generates applications in native code and also PWAs, with no need for you to learn any of the languages and frameworks or master the technologies involved. You can continue learning more about Genexus in the wiki page.